Welcome to the Kenora and Carers SA webinar, Resources for Informal Supports of NDIS Participants. Today is a slight change of pace from our usual webinars that work to demystify the NDIS system and instead we're speaking with our community partners, Carers SA, about how we can help those who support others within the NDIS system, all the carers out there. Um, if you're a Kenora member, you may already know me as Kenora Coach Yvette. I'm joined by Erin from the Kenora team who's manning the chat. And today we are joined by Linda Deer, who is the Program Manager for Carer and Connection Services at Carer South Australia. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us today, Linda. Thanks for inviting me. Um, Linda, can you point your camera just a little bit towards your face? Because we've got your ceiling is lovely, but we'd rather see your face. Is that better? That's much better. Thank you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, the reason we're talking about carers today, uh, systems like the NDIS couldn't function without the vital and life-preserving work that carers do on a daily basis, but so often the extent of their contribution is overlooked. Uh, it can be also compounded when carers are playing an integral role of fighting for the rights and supports of others within the system. Uh, and like a frog in a slowly boiling pot of water, sometimes it's not until you're cooked that you realise that your caring role wasn't supported in a way that was sustainable for everyone involved. So we're going to go through who Carers SA are today, what they offer the South Australian community and what Carer Gateway is about Australia-wide, so for those who are outside of South Australia. Um, and we'll also go through an incredible resource that Carers SA has developed about how to comprehensively put together a Carer Impact Statement to form part of the evidence submitted to the NDIS to gain access to the NDIS or if you're in a review situation. Um, just before we get started, a brief background on Kenora. Kenora is a safe and supportive online community where you're able to get support for your NDIS and other related questions from NDIS coaches and our community of thousands of other NDIS participants, their families and support coordinators. You can also find service providers on our marketplace directory who are experts in their field. If you're already a Kenora member, you may be aware that we record these sessions to share the replay within the community. Uh, also, any resources that we talk about today, including the uh, Carers Impact Statement resource. Um, and if you're not a member, don't worry, we will send it direct to your inbox. Um, if you look to the top of your screen, there is a chat button. Please click on that now and you'll be able to see the chat um, appear on the side. Uh, this is where you can introduce yourself, uh, enter your comments, ask any questions as we go along. Erin uh, will be monitoring the chat for any questions that come up during the session. If we get a chance during the conversation, um, we'll address it as we go along. Otherwise, we'll have some time at the end to go through all of the questions then. Sorry, a lot of me talking. We're nearly there. Before we start, I would like to make an acknowledgement of country. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the country we are meeting on today, all across Australia, wherever you are as we broadcast this webinar across the nation. We recognise their continuing connection to the land and the waters and thank them for protecting the coastline and its ecosystems. We pay our respects to elders past, present and those to come and to all First Nations people today. Okay. Today, we are talking about the often unacknowledged but quite significant role of carers and I have Linda Deer from Carer South Australia, who is the Program Manager for Carer and Connection Services at Carers SA with me. If you're just joining us now, this is the Who Cares for the Carer Resources for Informal Supports of NDIS Participants. And wherever you are within the NDIS space, we really hope you get something out of the webinar today. And we'd love to hear from you after we wrap this up today. Linda, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for can inviting you, me. Can you Thanks. tell us a little bit about your role at Carers SA, what you actually do on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis? Yeah, certainly. So I am the program manager for um, um, services that Carers SA provide with their own staffing. So we provide coaching. Coaching is a, you know, most people understand a fitness coach or a lifestyle coach. Not quite like that, but carers often put themselves last because of the nature of their caring role. Um, so we have a six session coaching program that you can it's one-on-one -on -one service. You connect with a carer coach, and that's around exploring your own goals. That might be something big or small um, that you would like to achieve for yourself. And what the coach will do is walk next to you to to navigate what that what that goal looks like and break it down to smaller chunks, so that you um, kind of get a bit of you know motivation, I guess. And some often we're quite good 
at providing that for the person we care for, but not necessarily for ourselves. So it's around just walking beside someone to what you might get the best out of for you in your caring role. Um, and we also do peer groups. So most of our peer groups meet monthly. They're across the state. Um, as with our coaching, that is across the state. Um, peer groups monthly, and um, you come to that through um, the Care Gate, which we'll talk about in a minute. The yep. other the other, so the other program that I manage is a um, state government program through DHS called Care Breaks. Yep. So that is we actually provide um, short breaks for, for people, um, for carers to get away and have a complete break for their caring role. So that could be um, an art and craft session for an afternoon or it could be like on the weekend we had a kayak um uh, kayak the river in, in Renmark, oh, and that awesome. was a two night stay. And we got some beautiful photos back from carers who just loved it. So it's a chance to get away. We're all about building connection with other carers. Yeah. So it's about connecting with other carers and having yeah. a meaningful time shared together. experiences and positive experiences. Yeah. 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 Amazing. I've just put up um, our presentation that we can go through at the same time, Linda. So um, I just wanted to talk about um, there's a really big um, difference in the way that the NDIS and government talk about carers to how Carers SA and any other carer organisation around Australia talks about carers. Um, why, why do you think or what do you think is the most noticeable difference in how carers are spoken about? So in the NDIS language, they use the term informal supports. Yeah. Um, and that's what we, that's what a carer is. Yeah. So they, I think that they used very, um, and I think if you talk to anyone out there, medical practitioners, anyone, they'll say that NDIS has their own language. And yeah. they use that, I think, because they very much come still from that um, very formal model of having to talk about formal, which are paid supports, and informal, unpaid supports. And it's the same as um, I've spoken to people who are supporting someone with a mental illness. And, you know, when I say them about psychosocial supports, they go, what's that? And they're yeah. in the NDIS. So it's yeah. another one of those languages that's very formal and that's because it's a very, it's an insurance scheme. It's very formal. Yeah. So we would call someone who gives, and it used to be called in, um, you know, a little while ago, freely given. So if you're giving if you're involved in a freely given relationship with someone and you're, that's an unpaid care or an informal support. So I think yeah. they use that language because it is a formal insurance system. Yeah, right. And just any sort of legislation or government produced document is all of that formal language, which, I mean, and then does that then play a role in the fact that people don't necessarily see themselves as carers if they're used to being told that they're just part of the deal and they're just part of the reason that um, the person in their life can continue having the life that they want to live? Like it's it's that, like a, a detachment from the I, role that they play. I think you're right of it. I think that's part of it. I think there's lots of things that factor into um, why carers don't see themselves as a carer. So I often go to um, carer groups, you know, where it's a, um, a parent looking after a child with disability yeah. and they know that they care for that child but they just see it as part of the parental. And, yeah. and NDIS, re reflect, re sorry, NDIS reinforces by saying um, normal parenting responsibility. Yes. Um, but actually it's not. So, you know, ages and stages of children and adults occur, but if you've got someone with some with an impairment or an infunctional difference, then you're not necessarily aware of what that might look like for another person. So yeah. it's above and beyond what's a normal parenting responsibility. Yeah. The other thing we find is um, in culturally and linguistically diverse groups, um, looking after a parent or a family member with a disability or dementia or whatever, uh, ageing issues, is just part of what they... That's what part of the deal. Culture. Like that's very much a cultural thing, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And we also use that word, you know, the burden of caring. Well, people are, some people don't see that as a burden. Like it's no. not, it's part of their relationship with that person. The family so, dynamic, yeah. Yeah. So I think we use all of those things. And when we look at NDIS, we look at someone's, what they can't do rather than what they can do. And I think it's really difficult if you are, caring for someone in the unpaid, someone that you are a friend or family member with, you don't see them as a burden and you don't see that that, because that's what you do for the person that you care for. 
Yeah. So I think there's a whole range of things. But I certainly think that that and NDIS have been when they first started. I think remember they were very the participant was everything. They didn't yeah. really take much consideration of the personal support system. Yeah, yeah, a realistic them. view. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's another reason why they were you were the informal support. So you um you know you sort of sat aside. And I often yeah. say to I often say to people as they're doing their um, access requests or even their planning reviews. If you care for someone with a disability or impairment and you've got informal support such as grandparents around, yeah. you know, just remember that they could be ageing and, and that plan is going to be set up for like, it could be two years now, they've gone for longer plan times. Just remember that that when as soon as you put down the contact you have as an informal support, the funding reflects that. So you've just yeah. got to be aware that yeah. you can't always, you know, ageing issues, people have their own accidents, their own yeah things that come up well even um without even thinking about the sustainable um sustainable um situation in terms of ongoing care but even just the relationship of a grandparent so being able to be a grandparent separately to being a carer as well like they're yeah, yeah. they're two very different roles that definitely mesh or um, yeah. interact for sure um, and, and your, I, sorry. as a person you're caring for has the right to have a response uh, to have a relationship yeah with their grandparent as a grandparent a role. Yeah. yeah for sure yes um and I also just wanted to stress especially um because we are speaking about caring in the context of the NDIS that the work that Carers SA and Carer Gateway do is is not bound by any sort of program or funding system or anything it's literally any sort of um any sort of care arrangement yeah. that may be formalized or informal or any any sort of situation like that so yeah. just so that everyone is aware that while we are talking about in the context of NDIS um the services are there for people in any sort of caring role there's no With, minimum like when you go for your comment for your um center link benefit there's no minimum 20 hours or whatever. It's yeah. You're, it's not means tested and no, no. income tested or anything like that. No. Cool. So we've just gone through who is a carer, carers their sort of role in supporting carers across the state. So then um, you did touch on it a little bit before, but um, we've had a few questions prior to the session um, asking if the information delivered today would be relevant to people all around Australia. So can you kind of give us a little bit of um, background on what Carers SA function is with Carer Gateway? Yep. So Carers SA is the Carer Gateway provider for South Australia. So if you, and it's a 1800 number, 1800 Oh, I think if my memory serves it correctly. <laughs> so if you call that number, then you get through, so um, South Australia is one. Yep. So you, you know, like any major national gateway a bit like the NDIS I guess but only works better I think yeah. um <laughs> so you dial the number and then you get through to to um to us as a um, South Australian provider but that works across the state and the re across the nation yeah. and the reason um the federal government went to the carer gateway was so that we didn't it wasn't different system in every state so because right. it's under the one gateway it's the same system in every state so oh thank you Erin, um, that's the number. So the the service is pretty much similar, um, the way we function because we all have to report to the same funding body. So it just means that it's a, an easier system to navigate for carers no matter where you are. Yeah, for sure. All right, so then, oh, I am sharing my screen, that's okay. And then just some background on the number of um, carers that are actually in the population. This is um, the Carers SA uh, information. So 2.65 million Australians are carers, so one in nine people. So that's a significant portion of the population that... Um, Correct. Yeah. So... And in the South Australia, 245,000 people. So yeah, um, it's it's a substantial amount of people that we um, provide support for. And yeah. the reason we don't obviously have, you know, a big, a huge staff team, it is quite... It's quite large, but um, it's not massive, like according to some agencies. So <laughs> yes. what we also do is broker out for services. So yep. we provide in-house counselling, but we also broker counselling services where we don't have our counsellors are in the metro area. 
So yep. if you're in regional SA, then we can broker councils. And if you come through and we do, um, we can do tailored packages, which is um, funding for respite. And mind you, having said that, if you have got an NDIS plan, we would um, encourage you to use what's there in your course supports for respite, but care as a can also assist with respite when it's, when it's for the caring need. We have yes. emergency respite, which is um, you don't need to be registered to access emergency respite. We will respond to the emergency and then look at registration once that has settled and in a better place. Yep. Um, so we broker those services. We don't always. So that means that if you come to us and, and you use a provider who's got all the right checks and balances and we might have them on board as a broker provider, that would be the same interstate as well. And yeah. we could so potentially you could use the provider that you use for your everyday supports. Right. Where they yeah, meet so the right criteria. Yeah. The organizations are um yeah, different across across Australia, but they're providing the same services through yes. the federal yeah. funding. Amazing. Yes. All right. We've just got a slide here. So to, spoke about it re um, just before. You're a carer if you provide unpaid care to a family member or friend with disability, mental illness, dementia, long-term health condition, illness that is terminal, an alcohol or drug-related problem, or someone who is frail due to age. So that's, yeah, easily one in nine people for sure. Yeah. Um, so it's and that's a long-term, so like yeah. if, if you break your leg, then not really, but if it's a long-term thing, then that fits into the definition. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so this is just going through some common questions that I'm sure Carers SA gets, um, that you're not tied to any specific support like NDIS or My Age Care, um, not means tested, as you said, through Centrelink, uh, providing foster or kinship care, uh, people can still uh, receive assistance from Carers SA, which is amazing. Um, and then uh, further support after a caring role has finished that is quite amazing as well. So mm. I would imagine things like potentially counselling or something like that would come into play in that and in that, situation. That is where we mostly, um, most of our services post care and role, I guess, ending is, is around counselling, mm. which is great for that grief and loss and, and moving. You know, and even coaching could be, you know, some maybe goals that you've got to move the next yeah. stage because of your... Incredible service. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Good. That's just a brief background on Carers SA. You've been operating for 30 years to unpaid carers. Um, you're now a Carer Gateway provider. And, um, yeah, you're all across South Australia, in Metro and Country South Australia. I remember yeah. because I was plugging in all of your service listings into the Kenora Marketplace. So <laughs> they are all across South Australia, covering <laughs> everywhere, which is amazing. So yeah, this just a little bit more information about Carer Gateway, which is the um, the federally funded carer supports across Australia. Um, so there's a there's an online portion of Carer Gateway as well. Is that right, Linda? There certainly is. So when you contact um, through the through the website, there is um, so you can contact self directed coaching. There's some peer stuff online that you can connect you there. I'm not sure about the counselling, but there's a range of services you can count. So that means that you can connect at, in your own time, mm -hmm. in your own home or wherever privacy. And so there's online um, peer forums and coaching that you can access as well. Yeah, it's really, it's actually a really useful resource. And um, some younger carers find that really um, beneficial. Yeah, being comfortable with the online space for sure. Yeah. Amazing. Local care gateway services. So this is um Erin, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> just wanted to quickly jump in there. Um yep. we've just had a message that the slides aren't changing. I'm not sure oh. if it's sharing correctly. Oh. Um it's just still on that first slide there. So you might oh, need to so yeah sorry. click through like that. That's right. Um just so everyone knows we'll make these slides available after as yep. well so you can have all that information too. But just wanted to jump in. Thank you. Sorry about that. Can you see that now? Or are you seeing me? Can you see that? I can see the screen. The what is the Care Gateway slide? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Great. All right. I'll just I'll just share like this then. Sorry about that, people. All right. Um, care support planning. So this is like the initiation into the 
um, so the first contact with Carers SA to get access to um, support services, is that right, Linda? Yeah, so you ring and make an inquiry, and then from that inquiry, take you know, you speak to someone, take your details, and then we'll go through, um, it's a conversation really around um, um, impacts around your life, and, and it's called a care star because it looks like a star. Um, it's finances, how you're managing at home, your health, your work, your caring role, and I can remember the last two. Um, but it's just around your general domains around your life, which go through um, what your needs might be at that time. And so from that, we then get um, whether you want access peer groups or coaching or counselling or your tailored packages, which I think just flipped up in um, event. So yes. And the tailored support packages are there's two different ones. There's a one-off um, that you can use to purchase items or services. Mm -hmm. So um, I think in the past, we particularly for our young carers, so we have a young carer team as well, particularly for young carers that sometimes happens around um, maybe purchasing a laptop so they can continue their education, um, those sorts of one-off things. Um, mm -hmm. Or then you've got the care director packages, which could be a range of practical supports to assist you in your caring life. Usually um, services you might purchase over a period of time to support your caring role. And that usually happens if you've had a um, an illness yourself or you're recovering from operation, you might need additional home supports um, that we can put in for, it's not long term, it's just for a period of time. Uh, and uh, and the, I mean, you'd be familiar with this, having NDIS stuff, that what you, you might ring and have your conversation and your supports will be different to the person that rings next to yeah, get their support because everyone's yeah. situation is different. So, yeah. I, you know, I could give you examples of what people get, but when I do that, people tend to go, oh, well, I can do. But what about this depends. situation and what about yeah. this? And, yeah, for sure. Everyone's so situation they're, they're is a little bit different. On a case by case sort of situation, yeah. Yeah. And Amazing. unlike unlike the NDIS, if your situation changes at any time, you just ring us and we'll, re, we'll redo that. Well, like, you don't have to put in, there's no process about putting in a change of circumstance. You actually give us a call and go, you know, my caring role's changed. I'm now caring for an extra person or this has happened. And then we'll relook at that and and reassess what, what might be needed for you at that time. Well, that's refreshing. <laughs> that's awesome. I know. Imagine it being easy. Goodness. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, Counselling, um, I would imagine, is um, a fairly substantial portion of the services that are provided to carers, yeah. would that be right, Linda? Yes, and we've just had a meeting yesterday. Our, um, we try and keep wait times fairly low, but they there is an increased demand for counselling, mm -hmm. as there is across the nation at the moment. Yep. Um, so you get six sessions of up to 50 minutes in length. Now, that can be either face-to-face -face Zoom or Zoom. Um, the online counselling you can do, um, if it's purely online, then you can, or telephone counselling actually, is um, available through the um, website. But we do face-to-face um, -face or, or via Zoom. And like I said, as we try and in regions, we will um, connect. We have a lot of broker counsellors in regions now, which is fantastic. Yeah. So you can awesome. access someone in your region. Yeah. Definitely. And that would be the same interstate as well. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, peer support. So this is what we spoke about earlier. This yeah. is um, it's about connecting, supporting and empowering each other to, you know, being a resource other, I know that I, um, I'm always amazed when I go to peer groups, like really good connection and, and often people are really well connected and have got great um, resources to share with each other and provide yeah. great support outside of that many. So I guess it's a way of um, increasing your networks and, and getting the more people who share. And often yeah, share. carers say that, yeah, yeah they, they say things in a carer group that they wouldn't say to someone who wasn't a carer. Because and so it's that kind of non-judgmental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, very powerful, massive. It's a lovely space, yeah. Yeah. And we've got coaching, slightly different approach to counselling. How would yes. that apply? So coaching is a non-therapeutic um, individualised service, mm -hmm. and this is, again, around someone's goals. So there's practical things that you might want to do, and I, um, I will say this, but I will also acknowledge that none of our staff are experts in the NDIS. That's not their thing. But yeah. we often get people who really, so they can actually get some assistance with their caring role, they might want us to help with um, contacting the NGA agency or putting out some, some Centrelink paperwork or yeah. some stuff with my aged care. So 
we won't do it for the carer, but we can certainly sit with them and, and, and give them that them confidence through. to make the call or to, yeah. you know, think about things that they might want to ask. Or there's other things. I'm Someone um, once used an example of they really wanting to clean up their shed because they like doing things in the shed, but it's really messy and they couldn't get out there and they couldn't get to how they might do that. Yeah. So it's about breaking that goal down, bite-sized yeah. pieces, I guess, so that it's not a big task. It's not overwhelming and it's totally yeah. achievable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, emergency respite. So that would be a fairly four. huge one. Yeah, um, you can con- – emergency respite, you don't need to be registered with the gateway. You ring up. So that might be that you've become unwell, you've had an incident, whatever. It's about the carer. So you're the one that needs um, support and it's where the person being cared for may have um, – they can't say by themselves or there's a threat to their health or safety. Yeah. So we will we will organise that emergency respite for you and then once um, that crisis is resolved, we will then register you to see what your ongoing supports are so you don't fall into crisis. Yes. I mean, emergencies happen, but we don't want people to live in, in crisis. That's not good no. for us as well. Yeah, definitely not sustainable for anyone. Yeah. Awesome. Here are breaks. You yeah, briefly oh. spoke about those before. Yeah. 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 So this could be... Um, this Sounds is like about it's giving, fun. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. It is about um, it's just a complete break from your caring role. It's not around capacity building or anything yep. else. It's just about having a break, catching up with some other carers, and having some shared experiences that aren't necessarily around your care. Well, aren't around your caring yeah. role. Something for you. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Sounds entirely. It's a great. It's a great necessary. program. Actually, we're very thankful for the state government for that one. Awesome. Um, all right, so, yeah, we spoke about this earlier. So the online carer gateway services, so peer support, self-guided coaching, practical skills course, and pho- phone-based counselling, that's all accessible through the caregateway.gov.au website. So that's an amazing resource. And, yeah, so where to from here, Linda? So what- if you're not yet connected, give us a call, that one 800 number. Um and talk to one of our um, planners here at Seaton um, to connect and um, and see what services you might be interested in or might um, be right for you at the moment. They are short-term services, so um, it's not a long-term ongoing thing, but you can always ring and get a review and, and see what, what's needed at that stage. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, without going too far into it, um, to receive services through Carers SA um, or Carer Gateway, there is a the Carer Star assessment process. Yes, it is. Yep. So that's yep. that conversation um, that you have when you first ring up, and that's the same one that they will then review. That I think it, it's usually every six months you get a review, unless you yep. ring and go, actually, I need a review now. Yep. yep. Yeah, okay, cool. So there there is a bit of a process. So I think in many of the conversations that I've had with um, various team members at Carers SA, they do emphasise the um, getting in contact before you're ever in a, a crisis situation so that they can fully um, see the big picture of of where there's gaps and, and support you before we anyone ever gets into a, a crisis situation and requires things like... Uh, emergency respite services and that sort of thing so making sure that everything continues along smoothly yeah it's about it's about um your well health and well-being rather than you know being on that responding to crisis all the time because that's what keeps people in a better place yeah for sure yeah putting putting stuff back in your cup rather than just That's right. yep. continually pouring from it. Oh, my gosh. Exactly. That cup. All yeah. right. So the next one, Linda, we've got the incredible um, writing your carer's statement for the NDIS resource, which I believe that you were a an integral part in creating. Yes. So my, I think my second um, role in carer's SA was to work um, – the NDIA a couple of years ago had the National Carer Connection Program and we we received the um, portion of that was for ageing carers, so to connect ageing carers with the NDIS, NDIA um, and sort of the planning for, their, for the person they're caring for. Um, and as a result, we sort of 
we went to lots of, I had a person working with me, we went to lots of groups and met with lots of carers and they were all telling us that they were having issues with access requests and um, and we kind of, and speaking to some of the local area coordinators as well, sort of came around that um, really a local area coordinator could be meet, you know, the people they meet with each day is vast and of course they don't have, they don't really know what's happening in your home. Mm. And we also realised that most carers weren't actually putting in care impact statements. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a whole, there was some local area coordinator saying, oh, don't worry about it, we don't submit it, we, we won't read it anyway. And and I, um, we quickly sort of started saying to carers, actually, do it, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. if you need to go for review, person reviewing has to read everything you submit. So it's really important to just disregard what your local area coordinator is saying at that time and, and do it anyway, because... yeah. You know, ultimately um, give every every piece of evidence that you could correct. possibly collect. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And what we yeah. realised was while there were a few resources out there around writing a um, a care statement, there was nothing that you could, I mean, there were some people that had some very good resources, but there wasn't all in one place resource. Yeah. So we, um, myself and, and the um, woman I was working with, actually, the most of this is her work, really good, um, sat down and went through all of those things to put it into one document so you could actually follow this. Um, and then the, this gives the local area coordinator and the planner in the NDI who's actually approving your plan um, mm-hmm. a bit of background around what, what life looks like for you. What does your family look like? What is it that happens day to day in your life? Um, one of the other things that we realised was that I talked to carers and I'd say, you know, can the person you're caring for do the shopping? Oh, yeah, they pop down and they get the milk every, you know, Tuesday or whatever. And and when we spoke, it quickly became apparent that they might go down to the shop on a Tuesday, but they're given exactly the right money. They always purchase some milk. Um, so they're not really doing the shopping. They're like, not doing we, the planning for what's no. happening. Like, yeah, so it's, yeah, there's and a lot of you, support around them actually doing that task for sure. Yeah, and there's a lot of other things that we found that carers are actually underestimating yeah. the planning that they the things that I put in behind so that person can be assessed with that t- task, which is fantastic. Yeah. But if we don't state that and then something happens to the carer, that person can no longer do that task because yep. it actually doesn't have the right support to do it. So um, we went through this and um, even we broke it down into routines. So yeah. your morning routine, you know, does the person, and I think one of the examples I used at a, um, a group I went to that was, people caring for a child with disability. And I, and I sort of said, look, if you've got an eight-year-old, so you've got eight-year-old A and eight-year-old B, and eight-year-old A, you walk in and you say to them a couple of times, come on, it's time to hop up. They get up and you might go, go and brush your teeth or have breakfast, you know, that's one. But you've got eight-year-old B who you're in going physically having to get them up, physically dressing them, physically feeding them, and then planning what their day looks. like. So, you know, child A might be, You've planned stuff out for them, put it out, but child B actually. So people don't realise that that's, particularly if you've got a couple of children with disabilities and varying needs, you actually don't think that that's, not every other person in the world with an eight-year-old is doing that. Right. So we did have to this rethink to kind my, of, <laughs> my caring huh? role. I'm going to have to rethink my caring role. <laughs> I know, I know, Just different. with that one example, goodness. <laughs> it's interesting. So we kind of went through and went very specific around what are the things you do or what are the things you have to think about that you might not have to. Yeah. So it literally you know. goes through all sorts of different scenarios and asks you some prompts about any sort of support that you provide the yeah. other person in that sort of situation. Yeah. I particularly like the emotional regulation assistance. So yes. that's around, you know, we often – carers will set up a day to be successful for that person and they're monitoring the emotional regulation to have a successful day. And we don't think we're doing that, but in actual fact, it's a large part of what we do. So if we don't, um, if we aren't on top of that, then we, again, underestimating what we're actually doing for that person. Yeah, totally. So um, so you do, uh, do you aid in preventing harm to others as a result of emotional outbursts? You put things in place or you choose certain times to go to certain places to reduce the effect on other people you um so and it's interesting too around transport people might go oh yeah but my 
son or daughter or whatever, they love catching public transport, they love catching the train. Yeah, that's okay. Could they catch the train to school? Could they catch the train during peak hour traffic? Yeah. Do they know to get off at the right stop? Are you always with them when they catch the train? So it's very different having a ride on the train for joy than yes. it is to actually get to where you need to be. To facilitate so, living a life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. and going through your day going, oh, we never go on the train at seven o'clock, or 9 o'clock in the morning because they can't handle that. Like we go yeah. at 11. Yeah. But so it's all those sorts of things that you don't think about. You just yeah. don't do it. And I think the woman I was working had a really good example of, and I'm not sure if it's further down, nighttime assistance. So I always think about nighttime assistance being, you know, toileting and all the mm-hmm. showering and that kind of stuff. But around, um, like I know of an example of someone who was working with someone in the mental health space where they had to um, ring a friend to say, to remind them to lock all the doors and then to let them know that there was no bad people in their house. Yeah. And mm-hmm. For them, that was their every night routine. Yeah. That's that's what you've done as a carer to make sure that person is safe that night. Yep. So you weren't physically there with them, but without that support every night, that person wouldn't get any sleep and would probably yep. spiral into an episode. Yeah. So it's really important to think about those things. All you know, these how, different touch points. Yeah. Yeah. How do you help your person, learn, the person you care for, learn something new? Mm. Is that a staged approach? Change. You have to introduce change in a certain way. Yes. All of those things that we do because we know that person. By experience and yeah. trial and error and, yeah, so then actually acknowledging that that's been a learning experience and that you found solutions that work, that right. knowledge is hugely impactful to the well-being of another person so that's and all this builds independence for that person but only because you've got the scaffolding behind it the the steps behind it and then the other bit i think i really like about the impact statement is around what what impact does your care role have on you and your relationships with other people Mm -hmm. in your life what relationship does it have on you between you and your partner what relationship with your other children what relationship with friends because you know you often hear particularly in the um in the intellectual disability space, I guess, where carers will say, I don't have any friends anymore because my children, you know, I had friends who had children the same age, but my children actually aren't meeting the same milestones that their child is meeting. So I no longer see them. I don't have any friends. You know, people don't, and I often say to carers, when you go into an LAC, they don't know what happens in your home. They don't know that that morning you've had, you know, outbursts from your child. There's been a tantrum. Then there was... They couldn't put that shoe on because it didn't have the right shoelace. The shoelace wasn't the right length. The socks aren't the right height. They don't know that. They don't know that um, your partner doesn't cope with that. So you wear all of that. Yeah. They don't totally. know that. So it's really important to do this, even even for your own. And I know it's another thing, and I know it's really um, even really challenging because you've got to think about your own feelings and emotions and how you mm. get through your days. Yeah. But I think huge. in some ways. When you write it down and you've thought about it, you actually you go see it in front of you and yeah, because yeah. this is why I'm so exhausted. Yeah, <laughs> some validation for yeah the feeling yeah. of depletion. Yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah. And we've had some. We've actually had some local coordinate. No, it was an end of our planner actually um, make comment to a carer that thanks for submitting that because I actually found it really useful to read and actually supported some of the things they put in their goals for that person for the person being cared for so yeah amazing you know even if it even if there's only a handful of people that it makes an improvement with it's still a handful that have got oh totally yeah and that um snowball effect especially in the sense of an ndis plan like that's huge so yeah yeah, definitely worth so looking at this resource or document as like a writing prompt for you to essentially kind of note down what's relevant to you and what um, or your caring situation, um, essentially compiling that into some form of statement and then that becomes your care impact statement? Yeah, so you basically use these headings. And, look, all of these headings might not be useful, but um, this is taken from the from another care impact statement I think Carers Australia put out. So you just go through and all the bits that are relevant to you, that's how you build your care impact statement. Mm-hmm. around the bits that you do that are additional because particularly for those of you who've got younger children you often hear that 
normal parenting responsibility stuff come yes. up. Mm-hmm. Um, and you might have anything to compare that to, but as soon as you document what you do, the person that's reading this knows because they read lots of other things. They know yes. what the comparison is. Yes. So um, you can't. Yeah, you there is no template as such to fill in, but um, you can, and it can be as in depth as you want it to be, or as yep. really depends on what you what you want to disclose, I guess, and what you find most useful. Yeah, amazing, incredible resource, and it's available on our website as well. So. Awesome. Brilliant. All right. So I'll just go back to the um, slides that we had. So that was the care impact statement. So then we've just got the contact information. So there's that 1-800 number. Is that correct? Yes, it is. I've said it three times correctly now. Yeah, you did. Well done. (laughs) Amazing. Amazing. So I'm just wondering, um, Erin, have we had any um, questions that have come up? during the yeah so just a bit of a question around any practical supports that are available for carers so obviously you mentioned a lot of the counseling coaching that type of thing for someone that doesn't really want to meet with other carers or talk about their situation are there any other supports or resources that are out there such as you know suggested a support worker for the carer to help them with some of their things that they need to do anything like that Linda um so we're kind of kind of but not really so um so what anything we do is short term so in those care director packages that i mentioned we can provide um some in-home support maybe but that would be again about providing or some people use gardening services some people use cleaning services if that's something that um their caring role is stopping them from doing or it has an impact on their caring role is the house and the state of the house or whatever. So there are those sorts of things which are practical, but they're not ongoing, whereas our groups and that are ongoing. So, and I understand some people don't want to sit with carers if it's around just speaking about your, that's why I think the carer breaks are really good. And we can also, mm-hmm. with our peer groups, do some um, retreaty type stuff too, where we actually, it's around connecting. I think in our, um, couple of our regional areas have actually gone on op shop tours recently. They just, you know, a heap of them jump on a bus and they, do some shopping, then have lunch together. So it's actually not about the caring role, it's about mm. doing community stuff together. So some of that stuff's really useful. But, yeah, there is the tattered packages that provide yeah. those. Um, and that initial support. conversation to have with carers would help them have an idea of what would be possible in those sorts mm. of situations. So, yeah, as yeah. you said, in terms of, like, laptops to help continue education or training, that sort of stuff. So, like, very specific case-by-case sort of, um scenarios would be yeah. definitely entertained mm. um, um just going back to the carer impact statement renee has just asked how in depth does it need to be so linda would you recommend going through every single question in that guide and just answering it in another document or should people just sort of pick and choose what's applicable to them i think they should go through that document and see and as you're reading through it make notes mm. somewhere else around what you want to come back to because not everything, like I said, not everything will be relevant to everyone, yeah. but mm-hmm. certainly go through it all and make the notes around the sections that are relevant to you. And you can, you know, the more depth, the more in depth, the better because you're giving context. Yeah. But it, it is around what you're happy with providing. You know, you, you don't want to share information that you're not happy to share, even mm. I know it's not face to face, but it's still your information, your, yeah, your it story. Is. It is, mm. yeah. Definitely. And I've heard some people say that the best way to do it is to think of your worst day as well. Yes, Would you correct. agree with that, Linda? Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, that's how. I mean, I know you'd be familiar with that because that's how the end day speaks yeah. as well. Unfortunately, yeah. it is around your worst day because that's what it's based going on to go supporting with. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Those are the days that you're going to be most in your caring role, I suppose, giving the most yeah. care. So it makes sense to make your care impact statement about those type of days, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I've got a bit of a question that's sort of come through the community a few times that I just wanted to ask. You did talk a bit about there about making sure that your own mental health is okay and your relationships with other people, you know, how you can use the resources to help support those other relationships. In the instance where there's um, a spouse that you're caring for, we've Mm -hmm. had a few people, you know, really struggling to maintain that sort of relationship with their spouse because they've taken on such a caring role with them what kind of the 
resources would be best in that situation that can actually help them come together rather than, you know, having time away from the person that they're caring for? Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I would recommend counselling in the first thing because that's around some strategies that you might, that might help. And we do have, um, we're seeing actually increasing numbers of carers coming through to talk about their relationship and how they might sort of that be better. Um, unfortunately, the carer breaks are just for the carers. So there isn't a lot mm. um, in the carer space yeah. where you can take the care of them. I mean, you can always, yeah, it's tricky, isn't it, because that's where funding is either for this or that sort of thing. Um, yes. <laughs> so it is to support the carer. Yes. So counselling, I think counselling might be a good way to come. And then mm. often what we find is people go to counselling to sort of think about things in a therapeutic way, then coaching is often quite good to come through with some maybe goals mm -hmm. that they might like to, you know, how could they structure a day, an outing so they do get to spend time with each other in yeah. in a relationship mm -hmm. way rather than a caring, a care away. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Amazing. And I suppose on the NDIS side of that, maybe it's looking at, you know, support workers to help with different things that they're exactly, doing to free, yeah. free up that time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's around when you're doing your impact statement talking about, well, actually, I'm caring for my spouse and I'm actually, my my spouse's relationship with, with that person has changed because of that. So then maybe advocating for support workers to do some of those things that you don't want to tend to for your spouse. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Amazing. Um, Ari, I can see that you put your hand up to ask a question. Are you able to write it in the, the chat box or...? Is that? It's not uh, really I can cool. put I can put Ari's microphone um, on. Yeah, let's yep, have a, just let's try that. Sec. There we go. Should be on Ari. Or oh, you might need to turn your mic on. Should. No. No. I yeah. I've I've allowed your microphone now. So if you want to click up top. The microphone symbol you should be able to turn it on for yourself i hope <laughs> maybe um type it if in the not, chat that's box okay, if that's yeah. easier yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah um or when we um finish the webinar and we put it into the Conora community uh any questions that you have um about um the services provided by carers sa or carer gateway we can definitely have um, carers SA jump in there and provide their their knowledge and experience. So, yeah, mm. that we, that we do just have another question oh, pop yep, up about sorry. connecting mm -hmm. with carers groups in Queensland. So, oh, yes. um, Renee, that just comes back to contacting Carers Gateway, wasn't it, Linda? And they'll yeah. direct you to the local yeah. local place. Yeah. Yes. So that's yeah, good. organizations in every state that can access these resources. Right. Amazing. Awesome. Well, if um, is that all the questions that we've got waiting, Erin, at the moment? Um, we did have another comment in the community a little while ago that I just wanted to um, ask you about, Linda, which is about young carers. Now, I because I did a little bit of research into it, I read that two to three kids in a classroom on average will be a carer, which just kind That's of blew my mind. I had no idea mind. that there were so many young yeah. carers out there. But I do understand that Carers SA have specific supports for young people. Are they much different to the other supports that you've spoken about? Or? Um, they're the same sorts of things. So from children from, I think, when our youngest care we're looking at, we're working with is five up to 20. So five up to 25 is, up to 25 is considered young care. And we have um, both state government funded services and under the Care Gateway supports for young carers. So we have a dedicated young carer team. We mm -hmm. do that initial conversation with the young carer and look at their needs from that assessment or that discussion um, as well as they do peer groups they do some coaching they've got a young we've got a um a counsellor who provides support to young carers also, so here in the last school of holidays they had a couple camps so they went to another night at Monarcho and then another one at the um zoo for different age groups but they actually provide um support groups for different age groups for children as well so um yeah, there's a range of um so again, that's the 800 number is the number to get through to connect to our young care team. Amazing. Yeah, fantastic. So good. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So I I believe we've made it to the end of our webinar today. Thank you. Thanks so much, Linda, for all of that information. Um, we'll be sending out an email 
follow up to everyone uh, who registered for the webinar today and we will post the webinar replay and all of the resources including the care impact statement uh, resource into the carers SA channel within Kenora called who cares for the carers um, and if you're not a, a Kenora member we will email it out to you directly so you'll be able to see the replay on YouTube and the resources will be embedded into the YouTube caption. We'll also chapter the um, the webinar as well so you can fast forward to the places that are relevant to your situation. Um, just in case you aren't a member of Kenora, it's actually free to sign up um, and it is an online community uh, where the conversation doesn't have to end. Um, you can ask any questions about today's webinar or any of the other webinars or subjects that come up on your day-to-day -day basis within the NDIS space or uh, around it. Um, tell us about your experiences, good or bad, and you'll have a supportive community to hear it. Um, I'm Yvette, that's Erin, and this is Linda Deer from Carers SA. Uh, we hope to see you in Kenora soon. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.